Somewhat recently, people have begun talking about a Russian one star who was uh, killed in Syria, and I thought I'd uh, weigh in with my thoughts on a general officer being that far forward. Now, to start off with, we are speaking specifically about the death of Major General Vyacheslav Gladkik, who was killed by an IED while returning from a P uh, PR event in a BTR. The prevailing opinion of uh, Westerners is that such a high-ranking officer had no business being in a combat zone, and that's the part of the discussion that I want to uh, jump in on. Officers always have a place at the front. Uh, in a way, the fact that uh, Russia thought it was acceptable to send a general to hand out bottles of water to future terrorists is uh, actually says something good about the current state of the Russian military is that institutional rot hasn't set in yet. In a healthy military, lives are expendable, the job is not. Exempting any portion or class of your men from that compromises your ability to do your job. Exempting officers, specifically, cripples your decision-making capability. Let me give you a contrasting example of two ways of utilizing your officers and uh, try to show you what I mean. Let's say that you are a lower enlisted man moving over the Zagros mountain range during a war with Iran. You are part of a fictional brigade of four battalions of four companies, all infantry, no support elements. The brigade has an Air Force liaison officer in charge of coordinating the use of surveillance aircraft in the area. Your one star has asked for and received a high altitude flyover of the day's objectives and of the terrain ahead. Based on the photos, the brigade has constructed today's timetables and objectives for each battalion. The battalion uses the same photos to decide that your company, Bravo, will advance along the bottom of the broad valley. Alpha will be to your south, Charlie will be to your north. Your advance is eastward. Alpha will be moving along a wooded ridge line. Charlie will be to the outside of a bare ridge line. Your job is to move five miles to the east, where the valley begins to open up. Then halt and wait for reinforcements before advancing further. No resistance is expected. The nearest village is two days' walk ahead, and the, dry, and the drone flyover showed that it is still fully occupied. Your platoon is on point. Company headquarters is a mile back in a tent and will move up in the evening. Battalion is in a secure fob three miles back and will not move up until a new secure area is available for them. Brigade is in an air conditioned building on an air base in Iraq. As you move forward, you are fired upon by at least two RPGs near simultaneously and are pinned down by machine gun fire. Air support is available, but it is stretched thin. Your Fister calls in air support, and your LT advises your company command on the current situation. You dig in, and the other platoons of your company move up and dig in in support of you in the same general area. The enemy fires RPGs at your machine guns as they begin to open up, and begins to maneuver around you. Your LT calls higher with an update on the situation. Two saw gunners are dead, and a 240 gunner has lost most of one arm from the repeated RPG attacks. The enemy maneuvers closer and begins to come online. It is now apparent that you are facing a company sized element using two PKMs and an RPK as their base of fire. Your LT continues to talk to your captain and to your lieutenant colonel. The enemy begins their final assault. Your fist recalls broken arrow. You are dead. And from an omniscient perspective, what has just happened is the ridge line to the south is far steeper than it appeared in the aerial photographs. Its profile was broken up by tall trees at the base, dressing two bushes and then scrub further up. It is virtually impassable and Alpha was a mile behind you. Bravo couldn't help because their ridge line was lower than it appeared and they had no line of sight on you through the dense trees at the bottom of the valley. 
your inexperienced LT, identify the enemy as local militia when he first called company and then never clarified his situation until the broken arrow was called in, resulting in your platoon's request for air support being put at the bottom of the priority list. <laughs> your company commander was too far back to see the train or to evaluate the fire you were taking. And thus, there was no one to tell you to halt and wait for new orders when it became clear that Alpha and Charlie couldn't keep up with Bravo, and there was no one there who knew that irregular forces don't have that many RPGs and don't maneuver like that, other than the NCOs, who can't speak directly to your higher officers. As the situation became more dire, the company called Battalion for clarification of timetables to find out why Alpha and Charlie weren't providing support. Battalion called Division for another reconnaissance flyover, and completely removed from the situation, Division put the call on hold while the One Star attended to his daily sharp brief and read his CSM's report on area beautification. With Bravo wiped out and Iranian infantry now on their last known position, the F-15, which showed up after your company was overrun, has nowhere to drop its bombs. Enemy infantry now occupy your LOA and are bringing up mortars to fire on the now isolated Alpha and Charlie companies. The timetable is ruined, and the enemy now has time to focus on other fronts, kneecapping the entire war effort. And now, to assume that everything is the same, except that your captain is in a BMP just behind the advanced platoon, the colonel is in a BTR-80K close enough to his company commanders to personally drive off and investigate delays, and that the major general doesn't give a fuck about air beatification and forcibly sodomizes anyone who tries to give him sensitivity training. All of a sudden, inexperienced officers have an unsolicited second opinion on tap whenever they fuck up. If someone in the chain of command is overwhelmed, the next link up is physically available to grab some of the slack until they can properly respond and get their feet back under them. And the entire situation never occurs in the first place because Captain Yvonne sticks his head out of the BMP as he enters the valley, realizes that the time realizes that the timetable given to Alpha is unrealistic and that Charlie cannot support him, calls a halt. Lieutenant Colonel Ivanovich drives forward, yells at his captain, then recommends a new timetable to Major General Ivanovsky. The United States has this bewildering tendency to send young officers to play in the shitbox for a few months, then declaring that they are now magically too valuable to lose, while the Russians still have the institutional knowledge on how to replace their entire officer corps in the middle of an existential war. It reminds me of the competing philosophy of the two countries during the space race. The Americans designed redundant backup systems to be redundant backup systems of the spare coffee maker. The Russians simply built a pre-production model of uh, every spacecraft they intended to launch, tested it to failure, and then reinforced any weak points that they discovered during that testing. I would liken the American approach to designing your car with two steering wheels and five brake pedals, just in case, and the Russian approach to simply figuring out how to design a steering wheel that doesn't come off in your hands when you turn it. In military matters, the United States says, what will we do if our officers are killed in a defeat? Russia says, how do we make our officers effective up until the point at which they are killed? One of these attitudes wins wars, the other does not. The one which wins wars is the one which coincides with some fucking retard getting blown up while he's out handing out water bottles. <coughs> oh, shit. You know, I think that's the first time I've seen a dragonfly this late in the air. Your one star has asked for and received a high altitude flyover of the of today's objectives and the terrain ahead.
Based on the photos, the gate has your one star has asked for and received a high altitude flyover of the terrain. Fuck. Your one star has asked for and received a hat. Battalion uses the same photos to decide that your company will advance along the bottom of a broad valley. We'll say that you are Bravo Company, and your battalion has used the same photos to decide that your company. Fuck. Nope. Hey, it's your evil overlord here. I just want to let you know, at 100,000 subscribers, I will be doing a live action or, uh, fuck.